Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint an elephant. We're going to be using a black background for our canvas and we'll be kind of bringing him forward with using some dry brushing techniques and different things. So I'll show you how to do it step by step. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> He's been in live, our live chat today. So if you've got questions, you can ask those and we will try to answer them while I'm painting. Let's get started. <laughs> yeah, I've got somebody with me. I uh, can't remember his name over there. Some no. guy of over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I uh, we're going to be using a 9 by 12 inch uh, canvas panel. This is a Frederick's Pro Linen board, a Kyber canvas board. There we go. There's the um, thing there. And I painted it with carbon black. Uh, really, any black will do. Carbon black is actually kind of shiny, so... Um, I'm going to have to hold it up while we're painting so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, let's go over our colors really quick. I've got uh, zinc white, titanium white, unbleached titanium, uh, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, carbon black, and some glazing liquid. Um, really, I mean, if you want to just go straight black and white, that's fine too. I'm going to show you how to kind of add some warmer and cooler tones to it uh, with the blue and the brown. But, um, you know, you don't have to get that fancy if you don't want to. And uh, we're just going to use a few brushes. I'm going to, I have a number six bright and a number one round in the uh, Summit uh, 6100 series from Princeton. And then I have a few of their Velvet Touch brushes. These are also Princeton. A quarter inch angle, three eighths inch angle, and a quarter inch Willows Blender. Um, and those will be our brushes for this guy. He's going to be, um, I think, really easy. I don't, I don't anticipate him taking a whole lot of time. I'm um, going to get a little water on there. Uh, so let's show you how I drew him out on my canvas. I went ahead and just had him drawn out there uh, to begin with, but I I gridded it out at first, but I found that the grid didn't really help me a whole lot because he's kind of a, it's, it's an odd perspective. Like he just can't really fit him into a box very easily. So the best way that I could find to do it is to just fit his head into like two square, um, uh, two squares. So make a rectangle out of two squares. So let's find another page here. And we'll show you how we do that. So just make, and they don't have to be exactly perfect, but if you want to, you know, use a ruler, you can. Of course, I'm not, uh, I know this is really hard to see. Okay, I'll do it a little bit darker. Sorry. Mark's like, um, I can't see that. Okay, so just however big you want, and you know, I left a little bit of space on the outside of uh, my canvas, you know, and that's top and the sides. So whatever size you want um, your width of your elephant's head, Go ahead and make your boxes and then split it down the middle and then just try to kind of measure and figure out how how big your boxes have to be. So this center is more like that. Okay, so then the um, center of the head is going to be right where the eyes are. So if you did another line right here, right here, then you can kind of figure out where the eyes are going to be. Um, also, if you split this box into three parts, so kind of pretend that this line is not here and try to split these into three parts, three equal parts here and maybe in here. So kind of erase that line here and kind of figure out where the third would be. So that's the inside of the face. So the width of the eyes here is equal just about to the this kind of section here and really kind of the eyes go outside of it so this section here is equal to um, about equal to the uh, width of the ears so that way we can kind of know sort of where our boundaries of our ears are and then we go back to this line here and come inside just a little bit and right below that point right there is going to be our little eyes and they're kind of these little, um, just a, sort of a slits because he's looking down. So we're not seeing, we're seeing the eyelashes come down like this. And that's about all we're seeing. So then you're going to curve around the outside of those. 
to create the eye socket, all right? Then at the top of that box, you're gonna come down just a little bit and create a curved line right here. And there's the top of our elephant's head. And then right about where those eye sockets are, we're going to angle down. So they're not gonna come out quite like that. So this is kind of the outside measure of our of our elephant's head, and then they're going to come in and curve in like this for the brow bone, and then this kind of creates a little shadow right in here on either side, and then this meets up with this line here. This line and this line kind of meet up right here. So this curves right here like that. Then the ears come up, and they're also, they're right about even with the eye, so kind of the, the top of the ear will curve up and out, and then it meet up with this line here, and then it kind of comes outside the, the box just a little bit, and then curves back down, and is uh, kind of like this. All right, and then the same thing with this side. This side is going to be curved up. We're going to come right up from the eye, curve up and over, and out just a little bit. And probably this is down a little bit more. Something like that. Okay, so I find that the doing the little box thing kind of helps, you know, doing the little grid um, kind of helps you keep your everything sort of symmetrical. Um, so then we're going to have these curved lines right here. There's going to be another curved line that goes from uh, eye to eye just about, like in this area here. There's all these wrinkles. And, of course, this is not a hard line right here. This is going to be kind of blended out, so this will all be kind of dark shadowing here, and this will be kind of shadowed up into this area too, so this will be all kind of softened up a little bit. But um, this is just kind of our basic start and and then you're going to kind of curve out from the ear like this and then this these lines are going to curve out like that on the ear we're going to have these creases and then they kind of curve up from the base and in like that and then his uh, nose comes in starts in like this and it comes to about the same place as this did so you know wherever this is you're going to kind of come straight down and, and narrow the um, the face right there and it's coming in quite a bit if you wanted to you could do an angle line from the eye down that also um, this actually kind of kind of hides behind here and gets caught up there so there's like a shadow that goes from the eye down meets up with the nose and then right about where the end of the um end of the ears are it starts to flare back out and that's where your tusks are gonna come out and they angle down like that All right so they start right at the base of the ears right there angle this way and then this line here if you kind of kind of continue this line this way, these kind of continue to narrow just a little bit, and it stayed fairly thick all the way down. I mean, I it didn't narrow too much until the very tip, so which I was kind of surprised. I thought the elephant's uh, trunk narrowed more um, quickly, but it didn't. It was kind of in our photograph. It's you know it stays pretty pretty wide all the way down here. So, like this, and then if you want to measure the, um, the trunk, kind of this whole center of the elephant is right, uh, right about where the level of the ears are. So, right about in here, where we ended our box, would be about the center of our elephant. So, um, the, there's... Uh, two and a half, just about. Let me see. Let me see how, how we can figure that out. 
this is what I was having trouble with because there's not like a like a set, you know, some things are like twice the width here is twice the, you know, twice the length there. Um, the elephant was giving me a little trouble with that. It wasn't like there wasn't like a set spot that was the central for everything. So it looks like just about like maybe down here. I mean, I don't want to mark that spot. And of course, all of this is going to come out, you know, once you get that on there, all those lines there. I'm just trying to figure out how long to make my trunk. So it looks like just about um, below the, um, yeah, just below where those uh, trunk, what are those tusks start? Sorry, I'm having trouble speaking again. Okay, so right about there. So that's where I want to end my trunk. So I'm going to curve it in right there and around, right? And then um, it's going to curve this way. And then it does this little flip on itself. So it does this little curve over like that. And then it has a little opening right there. And that's pretty much what we're seeing. And most of this is going to be really shadowed out. So, um, And then the wrinkles are coming, coming out like this. And... And kind of curving this way and then right about the midway here right about this point here where we're kind of marked it they start curving this way instead so they're kind of curving downwards a little bit like or, or up like cupped cupped and then they kind of do the opposite they kind of start curving this way over this way like that all right then our tusks are really easy and kind of fun you can really make them as big as you wanted to, I guess, you know, if you wanted to make them even more exaggerated. But uh, they kind of come out like that. And about halfway to the ear, they're going to stop and do like that. And then this one curves this way, which I think is really cool. Kind of is coming almost at us. So it looks, it's going to dip down and it's going to go a little bit lower than this one. So it's going to come down just a little bit lower, maybe like right in here. So it's going to come straight out just about. And then when you get it to where you want it to curve in, you're going to do a line that kind of comes up at an angle like this. And then hook it back in on itself and it's not perfectly pointed right there. And that's what gives it that look like it's coming at us. It's that angle right there. Okay. And there we got it. So not too bad. He, he, he really wasn't... Uh, once you kind of get the, the, you know, sizing measured out, um, he really is not that difficult to draw. So hopefully you'll try it. And if you don't want to draw your own, you can use the traceable that I provide on Patreon. Hey, so. uh, somebody asked, uh, they said that they did, they did the Mandela elephant. Uh -huh. And would they be able to use the same head shape for this? Or? Sure, yeah. Yeah, okay. Totally. Yeah, because it's kind of the same. Yeah, it's similar, I think. Only a little bit more simplified even, so. All right, so let's start on this guy. I'm seeing all these little spots that I missed on my canvas here. So I'll start with the bigger brush first, and I'm going to go ahead and mix up a good Which amount is of called? the number six bright. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. just makes my job easier. <laughs> I'm selfish that way. <laughs> no, it's all right. All right, this will just give us kind of a warmer gray. We're going basically equal parts, 50-50, with this gray here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white. It's a pretty color. If you find it's too blue, add a little bit of brown. If you find it's too brown, add a little bit of blue, whatever you want to do with it. So I'm going to start with a kind of a medium gray, just a tiny bit of white in here. And I'm going to start to 
kind of put some direction in my elephant's ears here. So I'm going to work from the side here. You now we drew those lines going out here. So I'm just kind of con uh, using the that direction. I don't want to go too much into this dark area because I want it to stay pretty dark right there. See, you can see it doesn't take much white. Like a, it's really actually a very dark color that I'm using, but it looks it looks pretty bright going on to the elephant here. Use a little bit more of the brown. And do a few little areas with a little bit of warmer brown color, and then I'm just going to kind of use the edge of it and create some creases in the ear there and really I'm mostly just concerned about kind of getting rid of my white line at this point <clears throat> I can grab some of the white put a little bit of that along that edge And I'm kind of going a little um, choppy with my brush strokes so that I'm getting kind of fuzzy edges. That'll just kind of give it a little bit more softer look unless, you know, the, and then having like a really crisp edge right there. So I'm just kind of tapping instead of, instead of pulling a long brush stroke or, you know, really clean edges. I'm just kind of tapping it as I go so that I'm getting kind of these softer edges, a little brushed edge look, and adding a little bit of white detail. Okay, so that's good for there. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the carbon black and just use that with what's in my brush and just add a little bit of the shadows back in here where the dark areas are. It's going to mix with it. It's going to go into those dark areas and add just a little bit of that darker shadow where I want it really dark. Okay, so there's our one ear. Let's use this color over here. Let's start working in some of the lighter grays. Tapping along that outside edge there just to get rid of that white line. And then get a little bit of my lighter color here. Got a new spray bottle. It's like continuous spray for your hair. We'll see if it if I like it. I don't know. It's I like it because it it's like a fine mist, so it's not like adding water droplets. Because my other one was adding big water droplets to my canvas. I just lifted off the paint right there. Don't know how I did that. Okay, we got a question. Mm-hmm. Why carbon black? And then is oxide black darker than carbon black? I'm not familiar with oxide black. I don't think I have it. I have Ooh. Mars black and I have, uh, I did a black study uh, a while back. Let's see if I can find it. I don't remember what I did it on. I can look for it if you want to keep going with the video. Oh yeah, you look for it in here. It's in here somewhere, I think. So yeah, I'm not sure what brand oxide black is. Um, it doesn't sound, it's not a golden, It's I use golden, so it's not a golden color. I'm really not familiar with it usually. I mean, each brand has its own, you know, colors that it creates. 
sometimes unique to them. A lot of them are like ultramarine blue and thala blue and cadmiums and quinacridones. Those are all kind of set colors that are actual chemical compounds, but, you know, and then they create um, manufacturers, you know, create their own kind of mixes and blends from colors and name them whatever they want to name them. You know, <laughs> so I don't always know. It's amazing. I don't know everything. Wow. <laughs> There's just too much to know, isn't there? Okay, so the, doing the same thing there. I added the lighter colors in with that darker. Just trying to add those kind of um, wrinkly places in here. So dark. It'll be towards the back somewhere. I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now. That's the one that's almost too big for the this anyways. No. It was just lines of black and it had the names of them next to it. No, that's not there. Okay. If I find it in that, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that I couldn't find something? <laughs> it's not there. I'll go through it a second time for <laughs> self-preservation reasons, not because I think I missed it. <laughs> Good man. Good man. <laughs> I heard that sigh. <laughs> I will say going through this book is a travel, like traveling through the past. Yeah. All the different sketches and ideas that you have. Mm -hmm. I know. it's. Well, we used to, I used to paint all of my example paintings in there. Now, now I just paint them live so I don't give myself a chance to practice. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, okay. So I started out with a little bit of light color there and decided to kind of Tone it down. I've got my 3 8 inch angle this time, and I'm going to just kind of brush these back and forth. Sketchy lines. I'm not going to, I don't want to connect anything too much. He's got so much wrinkles and things. I don't want it, I don't want a smooth skin here. I want all this kind of wrinkly thing. So if I just kind of wiggle and tap, I'll get. Kind of sketchy. See how that's working. So this top part up here is a little bit more highlighted. So I'm gonna put a little bit brighter color right there in the eye socket. And a little bit in the middle there. And then wipe my brush flat and just kind of smush around those edges. Make them kind of fuzz out a little bit. No. It's got all the names of the paints. Okay. I'm not really sure what else it can be. There might be, it might be in one of those over there, I guess, but I don't think I tore it out. I'm pretty sure it's still in the book. All right, so going a little bit darker color in this little crease right here. I guess to that gray color. It's not quite black. And then a little bit lighter color right where it meets the eye socket right there. Okay. 
going over with some dry brushing here. Can't find it. Okay. Did you get another book there? Are you looking at? Yep, I got another book. Okay. Okay. So the key, I think, with this kind of thing is just to not, not cover it too much. You know, we don't want to cover up all that black right off the bat, you know, so just kind of take your time with it. We've got lots of layers that we can do in here to kind of build up this um, these shapes. So if we take our time, we can get a really cool effects. Kind of creating this shape around the eye here, and then there is a. I think somebody missed it when they were going through this book. Oh, really? I'm not sure who. Which book? The first one? This little one. Uh huh. The first one that I gave you? No, this is the one that you picked up and oh, looked through. Oh, good. Oh, my old one. Nice. Oh, it was right in front of the front stick of man. Yeah. Okay, so sorry, hun. So there's the blacks. Everybody heard that right. She said sorry. This is <laughs> to me because I was right for once. This recorded forever. Yes. Bone black, carbon black, Mars black, ivory, Payne's gray, obviously blue. Uh, this is ultramarine blue plus black, and then ultramarine blue and burnt umber, which is our shadow color here that we're using. So our ivory black is kind of a transparent black. It's got a little bit more brown tones. And then bone, carbon, and Mars are very similar. Mars is a little bit more blue or black. I feel like carbon just seems like it, it's kind of right in the middle, and bone black tends to be more brownish to me. So, but I don't know where the, what what was the black that they were asking about? The um, other one in there. I don't know. Okay, so I'm not it sure. It was so long ago, I can't remember. I don't have it. I should go get a sample of it and try it so that I know. Now I'm going to need to know. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, um, Golden P posted a color on their Facebook page the other day. And I was mm -hmm. like, hmm, I wonder if my honey has that. What color and I was, was like, it? well, probably. What color was it? Um, gosh, I don't remember. I'm looking it up right now. Okay. Anthraquinone blue. Oh yeah. <coughs> of course you have that color. It's kind of a It's a very dark. Mm hmm deep, It's a pretty blue. A very dark reddish semi opaque blue. Mm hmm uh, alternative to ultramarine. Yeah. Yeah, not as overpowering as thalo. It's right down here. Yeah, it's kind of in between. Yeah, it's more of a like a base blue. Probably if you mixed the ultramarine on that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. More of like a base blue. I really probably should pull it out and use it more often. I've used it in a couple of things. But... I think I did a color wheel showing it too at some point. Well, somebody in chat said that they have it too, but nobody seems to use it. So yeah, no, I know. I, I think to, we need to use it. I know, we do. We do. Can you find that color wheel that's sure. that smaller, medium one? Okay, yeah, I'll find it somewhere. Oh, it's in this one. Because I think I, I put it on the color wheel too. All right, I'm to, let me switch to a smaller brush. I feel like... That one is a little bit too much for what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to use the zinc white. I just thought that this might give us, since we're working on this black, that it might give us um, a little bit more room to create these 
highlight effects without it overpowering, you know, with a white is so overpowering since it's so opaque. So yeah, I like that. Yeah, so there's the anthroquinone uh, ultramarine phthalo blue, and then there's the anthroquinone blue. Oh, nobody asked about that. I did believe we were just talking about it because you saw it on Golden's website. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that we're getting totally off topic on our own. Squirrel. Squirrel hunt, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so there we go. Oh, I do. I like this zinc white. Okay, definitely if you don't have zinc white, I would uh, I think that this is going to be a really good one for this because it's a little bit more subtle than the white, white. Somebody does have a question. I only want to okay. know, is there any color that you don't like or prefer not to use? Hmm. That is a good question. Um. Hmm. Let's get on my chart and look at it. You don't do a lot of neons. No, I don't do a lot of neons, but that's not really, I don't know. It's, it's not, not that you don't aesthetic. like them, it's just not your style. Right. Today. Mm-hmm. I used neon for one of the that bright floral though. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. We did the poppies recently. It worked out good. Okay, so just adding back some of that really dark black right there. Let me grab a little bit of it and use it right in here. So hi to everybody. Welcome to the show. We're 30 minutes in. We've been distracted many times. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon, but we don't normally get that distracted. So if you found us, glad that you found us. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, check out <laughs> the hundreds of videos. If they're still with us, if they haven't given up already. It's like we just wanted to see the elephant painted. Yeah, well, let's just get to it. Come on, paint girl. Let's way. go. <laughs> Stop talking, man. We don't like to hear you talk. I get a lot of comments about that, actually. So well, I know. <laughs> it's not a joke. So just for that, I should say, like, no, I won't. Mm -hmm. You should say, like, what? Because you may not have it muted. Oh. Her, she shall, oh. her shall not be named. Yeah. I don't have her muted, so don't. <laughs> And it only work if that person that said the comment had it, didn't have it muted either. So true, or even had one. We're talking about our. But we could Amazon. say we could say like, "Okay, Google." Oh, okay. Something like that. You're welcome. I'll be quiet now. I can read between the size. Mm -hmm. Using the gray here. And just slowly building up these areas in here. Wipe my brush off. If I get too much, I'm just going to smush it around, lift it off. I'm going to try to get rid of that outside edge there, that white border from my chalk. All right, so we're getting there. Not too bad. It's really not that difficult. It really isn't. It's it's just kind of, you know, a matter of sort of taking your time and laying in these dry brush areas slowly. Okay. And then down here, it starts to really get kind of wrinkly. So it's even, it's wrinkling this way and this way. <laughs> so we have to kind of 
pick our spots to work in, and I'm going to kind of sort of map out these um, these little sections here where I'm going to do my do my wrinkles in his thing. So from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, here to here, that kind of thing, right? So just kind of map out some little stripey areas you want to work in and they're going to get closer together as you get farther down so down here you're really just going to kind of be doing sort of lines and then So I saw something on the interweb the other day, which I think is true, because mm -hmm. I saw a picture with it, that baby elephants, when they get upset, they mm -hmm. throw themselves down on the ground. And throw temper tantrums? They kind of, yeah, almost in a, ten, in a tantrum oh, way. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's really funny. So since it's on the internet, it's true. Right. Just like the elephant. Holding the baby lion crossing the road is true. Correct. And flying in a circus. And that was a, that was, I saw that uh, like a baby elephant, uh, like a mama elephant, you know, crossing the road, holding a baby lion and the mama lion crossing with, you know, with them. And it said something like, you know, this, the, the elephant, um, you know, saw that the baby was in distress and, you know, was carrying it to the water or whatever. And it turned out to be, and so I looked it up because I always look up those things before I comment. Because I'm like, uh, I've never heard of that, but it could have happened. And uh, it was like a, it was a April Fool's prank that that some that some company had done, and it's gone viral. Like, and people think it's real, and they did it as a ho, you know, just as a joke. Like, it was some, I don't know if it was a safari company or like a. Conserv I think it was a conservation company or some something like that, you know, and they were just like, um, you know, ha ha. And <laughs> so I've seen it everywhere, <laughs> all over the internet, <laughs> all over Facebook. And I was like, uh, but I didn't have the heart to say anything to anybody. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to burst your bubble if you want to. Sorry if you thought that was real. I, I ruined it for you now. I ruined it for everybody. I know, but, but I do, I, I could totally see the elephant baby because they mourn too. I mean, they have, they have a lot of, you know, they, I think that's why the, you know, it carrying the lion cub seems so, you know, plausible because they do have a lot of, you know, but, but they are, tendency. they are afraid of mice. They, for sure. They are. Yeah. yeah, they are for real. Yeah, it was, it was, it was Mythbusters or somebody mm -hmm. that did a thing where because yep. they're afraid to step on them. Right. They, yeah, the small thing. They can't see them. Right. And so they don't know where they're at and they get anxious. Okay. So now just going back in and top, topping off, kind of pumping up the highlights on some of these. And I am using my gray that's mixed with my white, but I could, I could be using my zinc white too. I'm pulling my, some of the zinc white over here on some of these. So just touching off the corners here and just kind of the main thing is just to kind of, you know, if you're just to not, not have it like be like stripies, you know, just kind of blend either, either side of it. And then, um, you can kind of get away with, Uh, doing these bright, you know, bright spots in the middle of these dark, as long as you kind of blend the edges out a little bit. Uh, so let's trying to create some wrinkles here. Just every time I think I've already done them, you know, this section, I'm like, oh, no, there's some more wrinkles there. So there's a movie coming out about a circus and there's an elephant that's flying around so are you saying that that's true or not true that's not true that's not true okay sadly hmm. you, you, it's come out it's gotten really bad reviews i don't know what it is about it but 
I've been hearing that it's gotten. Because I try to snort up a, a feather myself and fly, but that didn't work. So <laughs> I don't know if it's a special kind of feather. Can't. Yes, it was a magic feather, honey. Well, that explains a lot. Mm-hmm. You're so weird. I love you, but you're so weird sometimes. <laughs> I just want to see if you can paint through adversity. It's bad today. You're being really mean to me. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that was mean. Maybe a little distracting, but mm-hmm. I feel bad for anybody who's trying to paint along with me today. Okay, tapping. <laughs> okay, so there's a really heavy crease right there. So I'm going to. I come just below that and do these lines coming down and then they get closer together and right there and they're a lot darker on this side right in here so Let's try it with this. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we can see how it looks. This is that uh, Willow's Blender. So I'm thinking maybe I can get some interesting shapes happening with this that won't be as obvious. Yeah. It's good for dry brushing. It works pretty well. So let's... That might be a little bit too... Too soft compared to all the rest of it. I guess we can use it in other places. To, so we'll use it up here. Tap in some highlights up in here. This is just a stiff bristle brush, so if you don't have this exact brush, you can just kind of use whatever you have that's similar. Some sort of stiff bristled hog bristle brush or something like that. This will create those kind of broken edged dry brush. Not using a whole lot of paint on here, so I'm set it down and just kind of pull. And it'll create these little highlight areas for me. And use a little bit of the burnt or the unbleached titanium just so it's a little bit warmer, white, and not so cold. And by, by cold, I mean kind of blue. You no know, regular white has kind of got a lot of blue tones in it. This will be a little bit more. Warm brownish. Okay. It's working all right. This will also give softer edges to your areas here. It's a little bit easier maybe to blend with. You're blending one color to another kind of already gives you that kind of soft fudgy fuzziness that we're looking for in some of this fudginess I fuzziness know. did i say fudginess at first but you corrected yourself no. but um maybe i'm hungry yeah i was gonna say good thing that uh, your fans are sending you candy i know we did we get we get candy again yeah whatever happened to the candy mona sent us it's sitting right here next to me. That's okay, yeah. I told her that you confiscated it. I did. 
so I could have some because I didn't get any the last time she sent candy. It it went disappeared behind your box fort that you had going on. <laughs> <laughs> This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one right there. Yeah, I still have some over oh, here. Oh, yeah. okay. It's it's the kind that you savor. Okay. So. Mm, it looks good. I'm liking this. So I'm going to kind of just pull straight down here in between my little area that I have. Yeah, that's working. See that? Just kind of pulled straight down. I'm just going to go along that outside edge of the of the trunk with a dark gray here. Get rid of my line. There we go. And then I'm gonna go in my dark shadow areas here and just kind of tap over with my dark dark gray color So this is coming out a little too far over here. Use the carbon black there, to just gonna pull it back. And shadow out that edge a little bit. And what we're gonna do too, is we're gonna go back in and glaze over with black. So if you get it too dark or too bright, um, don't worry, you know, don't worry too much about it because we'll fix it at the end when we glaze it. So this area's got some highlight right there, and then the rest of this is pretty much dark. Come back in here and just adding some more of this dry brushing. It's not solid lines, so it's creating these good. Someone has asked, mm -hmm. what is glazing? Glazing is, um, it's also, I also sometimes call it a wash, but a wash is more like what you use for glazing. Glazing is the technique. Um, washing would be for, um, well, anyhow, it's just basically using a thin layer of paint to paint over another area to change the darkness, lightness, to change the color, tint it, you know, you can do a lot of subtle techniques with glazing. Um, so we're going to use that. All right, so I've got black hair, carbon black hair on this brush, and I'm just going to kind of do some vertical 
wrinkles that I'm seeing. I'm just tapping lightly to get those in there. They're going to look a little bit too dark at first here, but then we'll add some wrinkles the other way and it'll make a little bit more sense. And then when we glaze over it, glazing is really good for like unifying a painting. Um, so when you get, you know, when you get a painting that's like this, it's got a lot of um, light areas that, um, you know, where you just, you don't want to repaint the whole thing. You just want to tone down certain areas or maybe, you know, darken them up a little bit. You can use glazing to do that and it'll um, really quickly change the look of your painting without having to repaint the whole section. So. so just adding back in some dark wrinkly areas. And if this brush is too big, you can always switch to a different brush. But these wrinkles come down and they get real close together as they come down this way. Like I kind of lost that one that was right here. There's a big one. Where is it? I want to put it in the right spot. It's right in here. Right there. I like how you're whispering, like you're sneaking up on it. a little bit better see he's all kind of wrinkly scarred up and everything and it, it it is a little bit off the the values are a little bit off I have some areas that need to be shadowed and uh, such so but we'll get to that And really you could, if you're, you know, if you're doing this as a beginner, you could just do your dry brushing like I did here down the trunk and just let, you know, leave it. Um, you don't have to go back in here and kind of, you know, add the dark back in and, you know, more wrinkles and that kind of thing. You can do as much or little as you want with this. Okay, so Jill asked, how do you surprise someone uh, special? How? Unique up on them. 
That's good. Is this uh, zinc white? No, I'm using carbon black right now. Okay. I think that's what it says. It's in French. So. Mm. My French skills are small. small. I'll use my translator. Okay. Adjustments here. So what they asked is, what is zinc white? Uh, what is zinc white? Yes. It is um, transparent white. So it's a white. Um, titanium white is opaque, you know, very opaque. And uh, zinc white. Um, Sorry, you here, have to I'll show I'll show the difference on the tusks here. You have to answer in French. Hold Sorry. On. Oh, oh. <laughs> good luck with that. So here's zinc white. So you didn't see how it's transparent there. It's not going to cover this black. It's going to leave. You know, some streaks and transparent spots, which is great for our elephant. And then here's the titanium white on this one. If I can get some. There we go. See the difference? It's pretty obvious on the black canvas. And I should show you, I'll show you titanium white with some glazing medium. Added. So here's titanium white with glazing medium. I'm going over the zinc white area, but you can see how it's covering a lot more than the zinc white did, you know. So. Even with the glazing liquid, because it's um, fundamentally it's it's made of you know particles, and uh, you really can't take those particles out of it. You know, like zinc white just doesn't have those particles in it, so it's not gonna, or it does, but in, in much smaller quantity. Maybe I don't know exactly what it's made out of, but. There's our tusks, and I left a little bit darker right there. I'm going to go ahead and use this kind of glazed white here on my elephant trunk. I'm tapping in vertical and kind of horizontal sections.
Okay, now is where I can kind of go back in here where I did these these wrinkles and just kind of soften them up a little bit too. Use the titanium white for the very tip here. And if you're if you're you know thinking about making the switch between um, grabbing some more of that zinc white between you know, your, your um, craft acrylics or, you know, cheaper acrylics and your heavy body acrylics, the first one that I would buy uh, in a good quality paint would be your titanium white because it is, uh, there's a big difference between the titanium white in the golden, you know, than a white in a craft paint. There's just a huge difference. So... Mix up a gray here. I got a little happy with my white here, so I'm gonna go back in and create my sections. I feel like I'm missing a, there we go, missing a. It was break time. Oh, break time. Taking your mm -hmm. 15 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> you don't want me to file grievance. No. Nope. How long have I been painting? Doesn't feel like very long. Only an hour. Okay. beat up weather weather trunk <laughs> I'm going to go through here and there are these kind of horizontal stripes in the trunk if I can get the paint to stick So I've got all my vertical, and now I'm going in here and kind of underneath the bottom of all these kind of vertical sections, I'm kind of creating this sort of sagging skin that kind of goes all the way across the wrinkled sections from one side to the other. There's just a little bit of a line kind of just right above that dark line going through and tapping in. And you may not need to do it. You may already have this in there, but I noticed I didn't, so. Right. 
and go back in with my dark. And do the same thing up here, just kind of darken up those creases and kind of add a little wrinkles. I'm just using the tip of my brush to kind of draw these in. Little tiny wrinkles. There's not a lot of wrinkles up in here, but I am going to like add some little pockets of darker, smaller wrinkles. Just there are some kind of broken edged things happening here. It's not just completely smooth, so just adding some texture in there to break that up a little bit. Using that flat edge of that angle brush just creates these lines, these thin, very thin lines. statement earlier that was seemed like it was hitting close too close to home for some of us. Uh oh, what did I say? You said wrinkles across the saggy parts. <laughs> so just be careful what you're saying, okay? <laughs> I know from experience that that's what happens. So <laughs> um <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I know I was I was thinking the other day it's almost like like I've started aging in dog years. You know, just like really didn't notice a whole lot of wrinkles when I was in my thirties or four you know, like mid forty, early forties. But it's like I get about forty five and it's just like, hmm, every year my face just seems to get worse. <laughs> it's like it's like I look at my pictures from last year and I'm like, Oh dang it. <laughs> like I I look so young there. <laughs> it's only been a year, you know. <laughs> You're like, what happened? <laughs> oh my gosh. I really feel like it like accelerates somehow. Once you get to a certain age, just like, oh my gosh, what is happening? All right. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know. I think it'll look, I like it better when I get it glazed. I think some of these lines maybe are not quite going the right direction yet. So let me pull in some lines, kind of coming at an angle from the sides here. Like they don't go straight across, they kind of angle a little bit too. the glazing liquid, my carbon black. Depending on how much glazing and how much black you use, um, you'll get a much more, you know, dramatic effect here. So just kind of depends on how much you want to cover up. So, But I'm going to go in here in my darkest areas with this and then just kind of gently brush it over where I've got these highlighted areas. And I can emphasize my darkest little areas here 
with my glaze. So glaze, not glaze. You can kind of see the softness like right here, over here. Once we glaze it, it'll, it like, I don't know, it's kind of like a miracle uh, concealer or something, you know. It just softens everything up, makes it look a little bit, you know, nicer. Um, see that difference there. And we can do, you know, like I said, if you want, if you really have a hard line there, you may want to use a little bit more paint um, in your glazing liquid. But you want to use glazing liquid instead of water because um, if you just use water and you thin out these heavy body acrylics too much, they will not bind to your canvas. And then if you go to glaze over it again, it'll just lift off the previous color. So... If you've ever dropped water onto your canvas while it's drying, that's the that's what happens. It's it's you know that water uh, affects the binding and the paint, and it just pulls it right off the canvas. So do it right here by the eye, all along this side of the face. Ah, oh, see how nice that is. Really easy to get this kind of sunken you know in fact if i use too much i can use my finger to kind of rub, rub some of it off and get it all in these dark areas where i want it and you're doing that to help set it back yeah, yeah. it's just it's what is setting it back but it's also kind of just uh unifying the whole thing you know it kind of just softens the effect of all of it um, I need to work on this eye a little bit here. I don't know why this eye looks dark, looks lower than the other one. I didn't put it in right. I think I'm gonna get a little bit of my get my round brush here, a little bit of that carbon black. I'm just going to round out that eye there. Let me add just a tiny indication of lashes. I don't want it to look like a Self a dip in my white paint. And you kind of got an elephant shape going on on your palette, also there. Do I? Yeah. Where? Right there. That's the tip of the nose you were just at, or trunk. This is the tip of the trunk. Yeah, and then the trunk comes down oh, into the head. Well, there's then... the tu is that the mouth. Sure. What's this thing? I don't know. You made it. <laughs> I thought you knew what you were doing. <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> I'm right. not an elephantologist. <laughs> it's even funny when you don't react. <laughs> <laughs> Your jokes are even funny when you when I don't react. Yep. <laughs> I even laugh at that.
Okay, so just adding the glazing liquid air with the black. Let me get all that white out of my brush. I don't want any white. I don't want any white in there because I don't want it to turn gray because I want it to disappear against this dark background when I get toward the edge. So I don't want any white. I want it to be the exact same color as my background with just glazing liquid. That's it. That way I can go along these edges here and then I won't end up with like this halo of gray around the sides of my elephant. So I'm just going to start shading in this trunk towards the middle here, shading this outside edge a little bit. Really this is all kind of darker than what I have it. Disappear those ears so they're kind of hiding back there. And then this dark carbon black glaze. I'm kind of scribbling it up in the dark areas of my tree, my trunk there. So you can see the difference between the areas that we've done and not haven't done yet. Makes a big difference. And this is going right along that edge and pulling it in on either side. And we want to make sure that the previous layers here are dry so that we're not lifting off our paint. So we have to make sure that this under color is dry completely before we do this. And then as we get to this bottom area, it's really dark. So I'm going to just cover the whole area with this. And then I'm going to go in with darker carbon black. So just a little bit of glazing liquid, but mostly dark, mostly carbon black. And I'm going to go right up under there and really Darken up that section right there. I'll draw in some lines with my brush. But I want this bottom edge to disappear completely. And then if you, if it dries and you end up seeing kind of a halo, it may be because of the glazing liquid. So what you can do is go back in with your carbon black, just straight carbon black, and do another coat um, in, you know, on your black areas to uh, cover that up. But probably when you varnish it, it'll go away any, anyways. You know, uh, if you've got any shiny areas, it'll the varnish will even it out. I'm going to use more of this glaze with the black and put a little streak in the trunk there. One kind of coming up this way. And there's a little tiny bit of a shadow kind of right there as it kind of turns the corner so you can that in there. Uh, we have a question. Okay. They would like to know if this method of glazing works with different colors. Oh yeah, for sure. Yes. So if we want to turn it, turn our elephant blue right now, you just pick a blue that's transparent and glaze the whole thing with it. And, uh, or like we're going to do, um, for our bonus video here, um, in April, we're going to be doing this guy and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to glaze the eyes so that everything's black and white and then the eyes will be a color.
so that should be fun. But so yeah, if we wanted to use blue, ultramarine blue here, um, you know, I could add a little bit of blue glaze. Um, even in our shadow areas, it can like really kind of affect the the tone a little bit. I really don't mind. Um, it. I really like actually using a color like this to tone it out because you um, it's kind of unexpected and your eye won't actually probably see that it's even blue if you do it right if you do it thin enough um, your eye will just kind of look you know still see the black and white but then um, you'll know it's there and it just adds a little bit more richness to it just went over it with the blue with the dark a little bit to Kind of tone it in. Uh, burnt umber is it can be used too. It's a it's a more opaque brown, so you'd have to use a little bit more glazing liquid for it, but it would work too. Really, any any color, quinacridone magenta makes the most beautiful um, glazes because it's such a pretty transparent pink color, so it works really well glazing and thalo blue is also a really really good color for the glazing because it's super oh, super transparent now is there a specific ratio of glaze to paint no or, not really or is it depending on how, how the effect that you're going for right it depends on how much you want it to cover so if you want it really subtle you can just use less but I think uh, you see anything that I need to do on him? Let's see. There's no like flowers. There's no That's splatters. There's no splatters, no flowers. Hmm. What is the world coming to? I guess we could do boho elephant. <laughs> or maybe put some glasses on him. <laughs> that would actually be pretty funny. I'm not going to do it, but it would be cute. <laughs> maybe a monocle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Monaco would be awesome. <laughs> I love that idea. Actually, with gold. Okay, maybe I might have to do that. <laughs> You're going to make so many people upset if you do that. <laughs> okay, all right. But you do you. Don't worry about <laughs> anybody else. That's what you want to do Just to your adding painting. adding a little bit of highlights here back in. Just to pull out. Oh, that's true. No my painting I can do what I want exactly <laughs> I love that idea of a monocle though <laughs> super cute <laughs> if you're doing this for a baby's room I would totally do that maybe a pipe yeah not a pipe for a no. baby's room honey. No. oh okay um, <laughs> <laughs> too soon too soon figured it would be a pretty short one and I probably took longer than it needed to be well we did a lot of extracurricular talking there but we um did. so you know people were asking about the difficulty level I think the most difficult part here would be just tracing it out honestly but, yeah I mean that the difficulty is not not too bad I mean I think that it, as long as you kind of um, dry brush you know follow the steps here I mean I, I kind of um, you know, did the vertical, then did the horizontal, then did vertical, did horizontal, and I went back and forth with the dark uh, gray and white and black uh, in that area just so that it, it kind of broke it all up um, so it's not too obvious. I actually do now that I'm looking at it, though, I do see some areas where I want to kind of go back in and just add some wrinkles across okay do 
down in here, they get closer together. So I didn't really have a lot of them down in here. They were a little too far apart down in here. So I just kind of made them a little closer together. Added a few more wrinkles. Going across. glazing liquid to the white water to thin it out so that it will flow off my brush if you don't thin out a, a liner brush or a thin round brush it the paint just sticks straight to it if they're too floppy they're too thin um, they can't they can't press that paint onto the canvas so you've got to have all this water they've got to have flow fluid um, acrylic fluid paint to flow off of them onto the canvas. So it's got to be kind of a milk consistency, very, very thin. And I'm adding the glazing liquid just so that it'll stick better to the canvas because otherwise it won't stick. I probably could have made him just slightly bigger, but I kind of, I don't mind it being, all right, now I got to figure out where to sign it. <laughs> I guess down here. Chat. Super chat. There's a cowbell. Yeah. So we had uh, one super chatter today. It was from Jill. And she says, thank you for the zoomed in side cam. Oh, awesome. You're welcome. Thank you, She's Jill. thinking you, not me. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> but but thank I you, mean, honey. hey, Good job. it's because of people who support through super chat and Patreon. That That's true. Made it possible to have the extra uh -huh. cameras That's and angles so, and all exactly that stuff. That's exactly right. So. Yep. Thank you so much for your support. So we talked about Thank it. You, Jill. Uh, Patreon. Yes, we talked about it. The traceable for this will be available on Patreon. Also, the reference photo, uh, high resolution res reference photo, and the um, reference photo of this uh, high resolution is available at the five dollar level. So one dollar level for just the traceables, and then five dollar level for the reference photos and a bonus video, which will be this guy. Uh, in a couple weeks in April. So in ten dollar level, all that ten dollars, all that plus Facebook, and we're doing this one in Facebook. And we just finished our little mice on flowers in Facebook in that group. So our little mice, and they're so cute. <laughs> they turned out so cute. <laughs> and we're going to be adding water droplets to this in this one oh, uh, nice. also next week. So we and didn't quite finish. I had two weeks off in March in there, so I had to. Improvise. Okay. We got most of it done. But these and are our upcoming videos, by the way. So next Tuesday, we're going to be doing this. Uh, then Thursday in the Facebook group there. Um, that's for the $10 patrons. Then next Saturday, we'll be doing the bunny and chick. Tuesday, Saturday. Bonus video. Tuesday, Saturday. Look at the llama and mama. Oh, my gosh. So cute. So that'll be in time for Mother's Day. <laughs> And then Wisteria Waterfall on a Tuesday. And then the uh, large um, Oriental Poppy. It's even prettier in the picture. It's kind of more of a coral color. And then Roses on a Fence. So those are, that'll be all of, all of April right there. Nice. Yes. And then let's share our fan mail. Oh, fan mail. Yes. Yeah, we got some fun stuff. Yeah. So from Janice Grantham, Louisiana. She sent Mark and I both uh, our own cards. Mark got, um, he got a New Orleans uh, like, magnet here. And this is probably my favorite. Yes. <laughs> it's the voodoo oh, stick man oh, is so God. awesome. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. Love it. I laughed so hard when he <laughs> pulled that out. And then I got beautiful ones. Yes. So. <laughs> you got girly girls. I got girly ones. ones. So New Orleans greeting from New Orleans and a uh, New Orleans like uh, street scene painted Art, artistic style love it love it so great thank you thank you to janice and then from k tatum i think yep k tatum we got turn your worries into prayers and pilates i thought you said pie and lattes <laughs> <laughs> 
that's awesome. <laughs> Love them. Thank you so much, Kay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and there was some candy in, oops, in oops, one oops. of those. Uh, did Janice send the candy? I can't no. remember who sent the candy. I think it was in that one there. Okay. Or the one from North Carolina. I'm not sure. Shirley Ray. Yep. 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 Okay, Shirley Ray sent it. Yeah. Yeah. And she, oh, I love this. It's so pretty. North Carolina. So thank you for sending these guys. Sh this sh is awesome. Show them the card. Oh, oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> she made Mark a special card. <laughs> <laughs> and I think her thing said for Mark, Mark magnets for Mark all over the envelope too. Exactly. So she was making 100% sure that it was not for me. Exactly. That they were <laughs> for the me. Candy was for Mark. Everything was for Mark. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Message received. No, joking. <laughs> she said they were for both of us. Thank you, Shirley. Yes. <laughs> Love thank it. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, thank you guys. That was great. We're we are filling up our oh, filling up our uh magnets section. Very <laughs> I mean it's it's probably sixty percent full now so we're it's 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 getting there it's, it's amazing there, yeah. so we'll send we'll take some pictures this week and put it in our yeah, facebook group so you for can sure. see yeah awesome so you guys are awesome thank you so much for doing that and uh we will see you on tuesday yeah for our uh Gal i'm calling it galaxy mountain i should probably call it space mountain <laughs> 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 Actually, I think they're starting. They're opening the Star Wars uh, at Disneyland, Disney World. Uh, yeah, I think they are. So that that could coordinate with that Space Mountain. I don't know. Anyhow, I don't know. I'm, I'm rambling now. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye.